Uh, 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 I got it. <laughs> That's okay. the last time I'm going to ask, boy. <laughs> there, I'm in. Okay, here we go. Sound looks good. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Coach's Spot. I am here with Anthony DeBruel. Yep. And I'm Jason Powell. And we are both actually gymnastics coaches. But today, I kind of wanted to talk about a little bit about coaching your kids. Yeah. Because I don't Worst know if you saw it. Did ever. you see uh, Lemachenko and Lopez last night? No. Dude, boxing's back, man. <laughs> talk about the two best lightweights in the world fighting each other. It was unbelievable. No, I was actually at a meet. I haven't watched the rest of the UFC yet. I got it taped. But there were some good fights there, too. But I'll tell you what, man. My wife was like, why are you getting so excited? I'm like, you don't understand. These are the two best in the world. I mean, Lopez has a 2016 Olympics that he went to. I don't know where he plays. But... um, uh. Lomachenko or Lomachenko, Loma, Loma, Loma. <clears throat> Loma. He uh, he has two Olympics. I didn't know that. Yeah. I, but you know what? I haven't watched boxing in a very long time. It's just this. His only loss uh, until last night. Uh, sorry, guys. Spoiler alert. His only loss until last night was his very first fight was for a championship. Oh, wow. He was three ninety six and one in the amateurs. <laughs> Can you believe that? I'm like, you couldn't fight four more times to get four hundred more. <laughs> But right. the reason I bring them up isn't to talk about boxing. It's to talk about both their trainers are their dads. Mm. So you don't, you don't see. I remember when I boxed in, in the late 80s, early 90s. Pro boxers that did that usually ended up leaving their dads sooner or later. And these guys have been with them for their whole career. I mean, Lopez is only 23, but he could not have looked better last night. Could not have looked better. He he was popping his jab out and just, and his dad was super. He was real positive in the corner, and it's just. Could you imagine coaching your kid that long? I don't even like coaching my kid right now. <laughs> I mean, we have a good relationship though. It and it, it does work, but it does hit its um hard roads. I was gonna say times. you got to learn to leave it at home, don't you? Or leave it yeah. leave it in the gym. Yeah. So our. You know, when I took over the team, I talk, you know, we sat down and talked, and I said, you know, in the gym, I'm Coach Anthony. Right. When we get out of the gym, I'm off. I don't talk about gymnastics. If you have a question, you can, come, you can go and talk to Coach Anthony tomorrow. Or right, whatever. right. And we'll, and, but I'll ask her, how was your day? Okay, good. You know, whatever. I don't bring up anything. Um, and then when I talk to her into the gym, I tell her, hey, this is Coach Anthony talking right now. Yeah. I'm just gonna let you know. So it's been pretty good. Yeah, it sounds like, good. Yeah, and like yesterday my wife goes, Hey, she's having a hard time mentally. Um, can you talk to her? I said, Yeah, I'll talk to her on Monday in the gym. And, yeah. and my wife was like, What? <laughs> and then of course my kid was like, No, no, no. This is his day off. Like he needs to have his, his mind out of gymnastics, so I'll talk to him when we'll, when I'm on bars with him. Right. I was like, cool. Yeah. And, and that's how we have it work and it's worked out so far. I mean, she doesn't come home hating me. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's always a positive thing. Right. Yeah, I don't know how uh, well Valeri Lukin did it. He coached Nastia. And she wasn't originally in his group. No, I was going to say he didn't coach her the whole time. No. And then um, boxing, it's real big. It's pretty big in UFC. I know my friend Will, who was on the podcast last week, he coached his sons in football, I believe, and maybe baseball. So it uh, it's hard. It's I couldn't imagine. I couldn't coach my daughter. My daughter's only seven or six, and there's no way. But she's also little Miss Attitude Queen, mm. so it would be hard to coach her. But a lot of coaches have to do it, and yeah. I think the way you do it is the best way. Is hey, there, it's done. If it's at the gym, we approach it at the gym, mm. and if it's at home, it's not about gymnastics. Yeah, and I've seen a lot of people that try to coach their kids, and the kids end up 
you know, hating it. And then, you know, going through this, oh, you hate me like everybody else or whatever. Because, like, even with me, I I tell her and the kids, like, hey, if you see me, like, give me more stern correction, tell me. Because, I, because again, because she's my kid, so I'm kind of right. expecting a little bit more when I, you know, and I'm pretty good about it. But every once in a while, they'll be like, hey, leave her alone. And I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. Right. Sorry, my, you know what I mean? My so, expectations if I part. coached. If I coached my kids, I think my expectations would be way higher than it is for because I come home and I'm 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 a disciplinarian at home with my kids, and it's funny because I'm not in the gym. I'm not a big disciplinarian. I'm a I'm. This is our system. This is how it works. If you want to be in it, be in it. If you don't, don't. I'm not I'm not a yeller. I'm not a screamer unless it's positive. I mean, I'm real loud in the gym when it's positive, but. And then I come home, I'm like, why don't I have that patience with my children? Because <laughs> I have it with all these other kids. Because it's different. Yeah. It's it, a different it, it really world. is. It really is. Like, even, like, when I was uh, taking over again, um, she was um, working her overshoots. And, you know, the, the previous coach had her um, over to some rail mats and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And for the time frame, I'm like, we got to take you to bars. Like, right. No, we got to be on a bar soon. So it's no big deal. Like, and again, and I had, it wasn't just her. It was just her and another ch- child. But I was like, you know, give me a block. Let's go throw a drape over. This is how we're going. We're going right into it. I'm going to spot you. You know, and I'm just like, I'm going to have to have you spot or whatever. But, of course, the first kid goes boom. And I'm like, oh, screw that. You know, this guy, <laughs> he did a good job. Right. Because they're, they're ready to go, you know. So, of course, get her over. Kid gets up on the bar. And she's getting ready to go. And I went to panic mode. <laughs> like, oh, I'm not kidding. Like, if it was my first day ever, and nobody taught me how to spot. Yeah. Just went, here, go catch her. <laughs> I started panic mode because I'm like, oh, crap, this is my kid. Like, yeah. It's just more emotion went into, and still now when I spot her, I'm terrified. I can get any other kid, and I'm fine, but her, I'm terrified. That's because you know her mom will sue. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, and I gotta go home to her mom too. Yeah, she's ooh, ooh. No, I, I, I don't think I could ever coach my kids, but I think that you have the best solution, which is you gotta leave it there, and then you gotta be aware of how much harder you are on your own kid. Mm-hmm. And with that said, that's the second subject I wanted to hit. Man, I saw some bad coaching this last week at a baseball game. It was a baseball game. It was one of my son's baseball games, and as you know. Um, my son just started kid pitch, mm-hmm. which come on, it's kid pitch, and it's the first year of kid pitch. So I don't know what that is. It means the kids pitch instead of oh, the coach. Okay. Then- it's modified kid pitch. So the kid gets four. I think it's four pitches. They, the kid gets four pitches. If they walk them, they walk them. But the strike zone's a lot bigger. And then when they're done with those four pitches, if they haven't struck them out or they walked, then the coach gets however many pitches are left. Mm. Uh, two, two, one or two. I don't know. It's how many kid. The, it has to do with the ball strike count and everything else. But the reason I want to talk about it is we played this team and they had a decent record. We're undefeated, and I'm not bragging on that. And for those of you that have seen Sean on the show, you know Sean wouldn't brag about it either. Of course not. They're just better than everybody. No, not at all. Sean is. <laughs> Sean, Sean is one of the best coaches I've ever seen at any level. He really is. Gymnastics, football, soccer, everything. Out of all the coaches I've seen, he's one of the best. He is a great coach. But we got really lucky. And, and you know, he doesn't take it too serious. He's about effort. He's about effort and attitude. About the things you can control. The two things you control, effort and attitude. So, anyway, the reason I wanted to get into it is because there was some bad coaching on the other side of it. I won't say the team or anything. But... The coach argued with the ref, or the umpire, sorry. <laughs> I'm in football mode. He argued, or boxing and wrestling mode even. He argued with the umpire about his call. It's coach pitch, man. Or it's kid pitch, man. Settle down. But, like, got to the point where my wife, who you've met my wife. My wife is very, everything's down a certain line. Like, she don't screw around. And yeah. she was like, hey, and started yelling at the coach for yelling at the umpire. Like she's like, knock that shit off. Like, oh, she wasn't going to swear. But, <laughs> but she was like, stop it. And he, he stopped. To his credit, 
he looked at my wife and her friend who were both yelling at him to mm-hmm. stop harassing the ref, mm-hmm. their eight year old, yeah. or the umpire, I did yeah. it again. And he waved and he was like, you know, kind of like, sorry. And I'm like, cool. Everybody loses their cool. I've lost my yeah. cool. You've lost your cool. Um, so we're leaving. And as we're leaving, he's berating these seven and eight year olds. Berating them. When you get the ball, just assume someone's going to the other base. But the way he's doing it, like my son's coach would have been like, hey, guys, we can feel better than this. So we're going to work on that at our next practice. Yep. That's how he would have approached that subject because they're seven and eight year olds. Mm-hmm. And I think the biggest travesty, and you'll, you'll, I'm going to let you talk on it for a second because I know I can overtake you sometimes. But mm-hmm. I think the biggest travesty as a coach. And my one of my biggest fears would be I drove a kid out of the sport yeah. that could have been successful. Mm-hmm. I mean, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, isn't that one of your biggest fears? Yeah. I don't want to put words in your mouth. You no, no, me. no, no. So, the way I approach and handle things like that, like for instance, I tell my kids, you know, if you have bad behavior or whatever's going on at the meet, mm-hmm. I'm not going to scold you at the meet. No, we're not going to. We'll talk about it when I get back in the gym, and then you're gonna, then you're gonna know. But uh, if you mess up, why not? It's always, don't worry about it. I'm proud of you no matter what. You know? Or we go back in and you and I will figure out a way right. how we can make you better. And then the majority of the time, and even when I talk to parents, they're like, you know, why she score this, why this? And they get, you know, they get upset. And I, you know, I try to go th- through what I think or what I know for the deductions and stuff like that. And I always say, you know, we just got to be in the gym, and I got to be better. Yeah, I always use I because I got to be better that to be, you know, point. to to focus on where my kids are making mistakes. I I came home last night and I told my wife, I'm like, man, I suck. <laughs> she's like, what are you talking about? I go, I just suck this year. Um, my kids are just not performing like past years. This is probably one of my hardest seasons, and I'm struggling. And she's like. You just tell the kids to be better. And I'm like, that's the thing. It's not just the kids. It's me yeah. too. There's there's places. And again, because we had the time off and then the time frame to get these kids ready last minute. Right. Everybody, this is It wasn't ready. Thing. I didn't have enough time to, to, I guess, plan where I'm focusing. So I focused on where I thought, you know, was the key points. And now I'm still dragging, you know, in other yeah. places. And I'm like, dang it, I didn't even think about that. And then it's not a big, it's really not a big deal. But for me, that's what I go home and assess where I'm going wrong and how can I help these kids. And there are some kids that... You know what that's called, right? And every great coach has it. You know what it's called, right? You listen to Joe Rogan. You listen listen to Jocko. That's extreme ownership. Yeah. You take extreme ownership in your kids. Mm -hmm. A quick quick story. I'm at level five. And I know a lot of people won't know what this is. But I was at a level five state. But it was TAF, which is a lower league. I, well, I don't want to say lower league. It's a less competitive league yeah. than USA Gymnastics. And fun. And fun. It's, it's it a really blast. Is. They're my Love favorite it. meets. They used to be. I, I don't coach TAF. I don't even coach compulsories anymore. But I, I'm there. I'm the head coach. I have a girl doing spectacular bars. She's halfway through the routine. She goes, uh, she's on the high bar. Mm-hmm. And she goes into the underswing and shoots it straight up. And I mean, it almost goes to handstand. Straight up in the air and comes down and collapses on the bar, but holds on. Mm -hmm. As a coach, at that moment, I should have said, let go. Because if she lets go, she only takes the deduction for the fall. But because she killed the swing and she did baby tap, baby tap, terrible dismount, Uh, she lost like 1.8 or one point. She lost almost two points. And she won every other event. So she would have won state. I think she ended up in second or third, even with a 1.8 deduction. And it was a beautiful routine up to that point. I even went to the judge and said, you know, what would you have before that? She's like, I had her pretty close to a 10. And I was like, <laughs> ah, but because it would have been my first 10 in my career too, which brings me to the second point, extreme ownership and no ego. You got to be able to be a successful coach. You have got to be able to look at the welfare and the success as the athlete as your most important thing, not your reputation as a coach. Yeah. 
Because there's times I've I've suffered. My reputation has suffered because I've had the best interest in the kid in mind. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. Like I had a level uh, gymnast. I don't. I don't have to say level, but gymnast, and she wanted to flip her vault, and we were at state, and she wanted to flip her vault, and I'm like, you're not ready. And she's like, I can't make regionals without flipping a vault. Like, I can't do a handspring and make regionals. I'm like, then you don't make regionals. And she's like, no, I need to flip it. So we're in the back room warming up, and I'm spotting these vaults. <laughs> Anthony, <laughs> they were so, they weren't good. They, they scared me. And I, I now have a rule that if you can't flip it onto competition level in the gym, you definitely are not allowed to compete at the meet with a spot. Nope. That's, my, that's how I feel about it. But... This kid was a warrior. And we go out, and she goes, let me try to flip the first one. I go, okay, but I'm standing then. And she goes, and she's not going to make it. And I bump her. I bump her. I have to touch her. I have to yeah. bump her over. It's I bump her over. Face. She lands on her feet, rolls to her back, gets up, and she's so mad at me. She's so mad at me. And any other kid at any other time, I would say, do the handspring. And she's looking at me with these big, doe eyes and these crocodile tears and she's like my only goal is to make regional you have to let me flip and you have to not stand there that's tough and yeah and i at the time i'm a younger coach at the time and at that time making that decision it had nothing to do with me i didn't care if she flipped the vault i i wanted her to make regionals but as a coach if i don't stand there i'm gonna look really bad but that kid at that time in her career needed to try to flip that vault on her own. And so I stepped away. And I'm standing at the end of the vault runway. And you and let her she flip take, it? I let her flip it. And she takes off down the runway. Now, the best way for this story to end is that she nails it and lands on her feet. Not what happened. <laughs> it was, was nose. It, oh. She didn't even make it to her feet. It was face plant into the ground. Oh. It made me... Look like the biggest amateur on the face of the planet. Yeah, and yeah. I walked I walked on the runway, and she limps towards me because she landed short, and her knee was bothering her, and she yeah. limps towards me. Big, huge crocodile tears. All the coaches watching me. And she walks right up to me, and I go, I look down at her. And I'm going to edit this <laughs> for the story. I look down at her, and I go, that's the gutsiest thing I've ever seen. Because I didn't say, that's the gutsiest thing. I said... <laughs> That's yeah. the effing gutsiest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. And oh, wow. her her parents were really good friends of mine. They actually owned the gym with me. Oh, okay. So there were other things in play. And her mom even said, I'm I'm glad you tried let her try to flip that vault. And I know it made you look bad. And I appreciate it. Yeah. Because that's what she needed at that yeah. time. Yeah. I I didn't think I think she had twenty percent chance of making it to her feet, maybe. She was not a vaulter. She was a great as a Eight-year-old kid, she won a meet, a national meet on bars. She was a great bar worker. Yeah, at eight years old, but she. Uh, I love eight vault. It's hard, dude. Vault's real hard, and people underestimate vault coaches because oh. that's my best event. Yeah, but I can't say that's my best. But there's a, a absolute way part bars. where I looked. You are you are a very good bar coach. You're a better bar coach than I am. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, we'll you see. Are. It, it depends. It, I always no, say that it depends. It am. depends on who you have and who walks into your door. I, I don't think you know, so. I think it's systems, man. I, you know, and maybe that's just me being too humble. That's I you. Can, I can be too humble. That's you. But I'm the same way. I always give the I kid know. all the credit when they're successful, yeah. and I give me all the blame when they're not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's part of being well, a good coach. And, yeah, and and too, because I mean, I've had multiple multiple coaches come up and be like, dude. Especially this one year, I had the stout group of fives. I mean, th it was the perfect storm yeah. that you can get in a group. Right. And I remember they were asking me all season, and I was killing everybody. They're like, how do you do it? How did you do it? And I'm telling them, like, tell and this is the truth. This is the absolute truth. I go, no, no, it's them. Like, <laughs> yeah. I give them direction. You know, obviously, and I'm giving them. But they just challenged each other to where they were like, Boom, one got the free of pen. And yeah. then I and then I went, all right, so we're gonna do it on high bar. We have this um this bar that you can lower that goes all the way yeah. up to a high bar. 
we put it medium, and it choop, 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 went all the way yeah. up, and then next thing you know, man, they're killing it. I'll tell you what, though, that, yeah, I mean, and I was like, I understand it was that. The I've, had per- I've had the perfect storm on bars, too, but you're a really good bar coach, because I've seen what you do with average kids. That's how I judge a coach. What do you do yeah. with average kids? And that's why I give myself credit on vault, because I, ha- I have kids that I don't think other coaches could get a flip out of them, yeah. and I get a flip. I have kids right now that I, yeah. I don't – a lot of my success right now, I mean, I've been out for two weeks because of my shoulder. So, yeah. But a lot of my success has to do with who I coach with too because yeah. I I, it's a coaching team on bars and vault, and she mm. is spectacular. Yeah, She's right. 21 years old, and she, could co- she coaches her old she, – she looks like she's been coaching 30 years. Wow. And she's a good spotter. Good. Yeah. She's a really good spotter too. She's unbelievable. I don't – see, that's the only thing – um, especially on vault spotting, I don't spot a lot of vaults. I do a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of drills, and but you know, I don't, I don't have to spot a lot of vaults. When it comes to, like, which is good because I don't have a shoulder. <laughs> I'm, I'm fairly well at. Yeah, I can coach it with my eyes closed. Blah blah blah. Sooks are harder to. But, sooks are harder yeah. to spot. The timing's totally. Different. Well, that's harder to teach too for me. Yeah, but I will say, oh, like, not for me. Like I have Ned that um, he has helped me. Throughout the years, and still does he helps out on uh, one That's of my a great groups. Ball coach. Oh, I've worked I've worked with phenomenal. him at that clinic. Yeah, he's phenomenal. I hurt one of his girls within like the first five minutes. <laughs> I didn't move a mat all the way over, and I'm like, I don't think they'll hit that mat. She hit the mat, her broke her ankle. I don't uh, know if she broke it, but she sprained it pretty good. Yeah, and I was like, oh, he's like, not your fault, dude. If she would have gone straight, it wouldn't have happened. Yeah, but he's he's great. He's a great guy but, too. And it, and you know, there's some things that I go, ah, I don't know. But I, but I, I still, I, I'm like, it doesn't matter because his kids are stout. Yeah. And you know, I, I haven't seen very many coaches do what he has done with right. their girls, like well, he's, he's the way they coach. look and all that other stuff. He's a great coach. Yeah. Oh yeah. Dude, so, you're stout. You're stacked with good coaches. I'm not saying they're all good, but you're stacked with a bunch of good coaches. On vault and bars, you are. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's one thing. I'm the only guy at my gym. Well, but you know, and what? I'll tell you what. We we do Brooke this. Brooke coaches bars right now. Uh-huh. She's she's from Alabama, and she used to be at my ball. gym. Yeah, she's spectacular. She's the best bar coach I've ever been around, and nice. I you know who I've been around. I've been around great bar coaches, yeah. and she might be the best. Ooh, and I give her all the credit, man. But she uh. She's spectacular, and she's using my doing. She's helping with my groups right now, mm-hmm. and I don't want to say helping. She's leading my groups right now because of my shoulder. I can't spot, mm-hmm. and so really the only reason I'm there is for vault. Like I stand around on bars, and I'm just sitting there picking my nose. But so if you see yeah. good bars this year for my groups, you know it wasn't me. <laughs> well, he, he but wasn't you see Jason. good vault. My yeah. coaching partner even said I get. I came back. I tried to come back too early, and they sent me home. And she goes, man. And she names a specific gymnast because she's uh, competing in a handspring front. And uh, who I coach with isn't real confident with handspring fronts, which I can teach handspring fronts and sweeps all day long. And she's That's like, she really, needs, she really needs you. And so I'm like, ah. So I felt bad because I actually took another two days or three days off. And I came back and we went to vault. And her first one, she lands. And my coaching partner looks at me and goes, so all you have to do is actually be in the room. You don't even have to do anything. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's all I got to do is be in the room. That's funny. Yeah, it's uh, but that's how I think it gives a certain kids a confidence, especially yeah. when you taught them a certain ball. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, my girls, especially my level nines, mm-hmm. I'm gonna tell you what. Here's another thing on coaching. If you want to be a better coach, their coach that they had before me went to another gym. And I worked with them for three days. And by the way, it was one of the better three days of my coaching in my life. I was so bummed that he was leaving. Like, we, mm-hmm. we clicked right away. And we had a lot of the same, the same techniques and everything. And it just, it just worked. And I was really sad to see him go. But about two weeks, three weeks later, my level nines had a spectacular day on ball. Spectacular. First thing I did was text him and thank him. Yeah. Because he's the one that gets the credit, yeah. And then yeah. somebody else is like, "Hey, why don't they have their? Why don't they have this yet?" I go, "Look, if I can't take the credit when they do well, mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't take the blame when they don't." I've only been here three well, weeks. Well, you know what? That brings up another thing, and this bothers me 
to no end. I've been, for the majority of my career, have been super blessed with coaching partners. Yeah. Okay. I have and, also. But, but I've had some that are just, and this is why I'm bringing this up, because your biggest mistake is all of us can look at, it doesn't matter what sport you're in, by the way, but you can look at somebody else's groups or kids, and you can see the talented ones and stuff like that, and of course you can look over and have a thought, hmm, I would probably have that kid do this. This right. kid should probably be doing this. They're not doing this right, blah, blah, blah. Everybody has a thought. Everybody does that. But if you don't know those kids, you don't know why that coach is doing what he's doing. Absolutely. Or why they are where they are. So I have a problem with, especially having a coaching partners where they look over and they're like, you know, why are they just sitting there? They're playing. They're not doing this. Well, first of all, I'm not going to be a jerk the whole time when I'm coaching. I'm not that right. serious. I like to have fun. And the reason why my kids have so are so good is because they know, A, I got their back. They know that I truly love them with all my heart. And it's fun. Right. It's fun. So when you look over and, you, and you're saying whatever you're saying, either my – and I always say this because I'm the guy that goes, if you – if you know something better than me or you think you do, come and suggest it to me. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm going to be like, yeah, 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 or, or that makes sense right. or whatever. But if it's good in information, I am 100% going to use it, and I don't care about you taking credit for it. Right. But by you running your mouth <laughs> behind my or someone else's back, I'm like, dude, either you step in and you help or shut up. Right. That's a real and, good lesson. And you don't know why. Or why don't you go and ask that person, hey, wh what's going on? Like, like, why are they doing this? Blah, blah, blah. Let them explain it to you. Right. If they can't explain it to you, then obviously they don't know what they're doing and they shouldn't be doing it. But 90% of the, the coaches that I know know what they're talking about. And they're like, yeah. oh, well, this is why. It's because this kid, you know, she's just fear for it or she argues or whatever. Right. This is the best path that I think it's on. I think that's the, the number one biggest thing that coaches – do right now. If you're looking at somebody else and you're looking at their talent thinking you can do better instead of focusing on yourself and your own kid. Right. And for that's whatever a, reason and why are you looking over? You should be focused on your kids. Well, and that's a good but that's a good lesson for every head coach too. You hired that coach for a reason. Say if it's baseball and you hired a hitting coach, if it's football and you hired a defensive coordinator, even if you didn't hire them, somebody had the faith in them. Yeah. And you got you have to give them the time, because a real coaching influence doesn't show up sometimes for six, seven, eight months, maybe a year. Like there's things you can fix instantly. Yeah, but the real coaching influence mm -hmm. sometimes doesn't show up until that coach is even gone. Like sometimes a coach is only there for a season, and then they leave, and you're like, "Wow, these cornerbacks are really good. Why are they so good?" And you're like, "Oh crap, I shouldn't let that defensive coordinator." Go. Yeah. Because it doesn't show up till then. I always say give a coach a year and you, you can see what they're doing. Yeah. Give them, uh, the first season, I'm like, that's kind of the trial they kind of took over from whatever, for whoever else, you know, whatever. So it's kind of both yeah. ingrained. But after that, that's when you really see the person. Right. Other coaches. Right. For and, sure. And I Once think, they're comfortable with, the, with their athletes, too. And the second thing is stop looking at your coaches like, I mean, your kids like trophies. Yeah. So exactly. one thing that I can't stand, and I always hear coaches talking about, like, oh, look, I have this one kid, I have this one kid, I have this right. one kid. What about your team? Like, No, no, no. If, tell, me, tell me your worst kid Yes, and what you've done for that, them. And that's what I tell people all the time, especially uh, younger coaches like Chance when he would talk to me and stuff like that. I'm like, dude, first of all, I look at your worst kid. And if yeah. your worst kid is pretty decent, you're good. Right. Like, that's when I start Absolutely. to worry, period. Yeah. Right. Anybody can coach talent. It's not hard. No. You know what I mean? That's why I was saying, like, the kids that I had that, that group, that wasn't hard. Yeah, that was – That was actually yeah. kind of boring because – You just give them drills and then sit there. Yeah, and and the, those kids were so young, but they were fun, you know what I mean? So it wasn't that bad. But, I mean, like, even last season, I remember when I took over a, a team. You know, obviously, I'm not going to say it. But 
a lot of the coaches in there were like, well, good luck, dude. Right. Like, you know, and I was like, and that, I looked at all of them and I said, what are you talking about? These guys, these kids are good. That's what I pride myself on. And then, of course, it's my worst they, kid. They score some of the highest. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, don't ever you know, look at I, a kid like that. I think I've told you this story, and it was with a coach that you coach with, stuck up for me. But a coach who's, I hate to do this, but kind of a talker, crap talker, came up to me and said, you know, I'm really surprised that you don't do more with bad athletes. And then, or so-and-so and I were talking, and we're both really surprised that you don't do more with that athlete. And then just walked away. And a guy that you work with uh-huh. was like, what a stupid rookie thing to say. You don't know what goes on every day in the gym. You don't know. Just because you look at a kid and you're like, oh, they're really talented. Yeah. You don't know what you go through day to day, day yeah. in, day out. Yeah. That kid on a Monday of that week might have been not doing any skills whatsoever. Yeah. You don't know what that coach goes through. And you need to take that into consideration. Yeah. Talent, talent has nothing to do with how physically gifted you are. The real talent is mental toughness. Yes. That's the real yes. talent. Yes. And if you have that, everything else falls together. Yeah. I have plenty of kids I've coached that have great physical talent mm-hmm. that couldn't compete their way, you know, couldn't oh. do I anything. I have like three of them, and I'm telling you, if they were better mentally, they would be with Kim, I'm thinking. That's yeah. how good they are. Right. But they can't, you know, and they're struggling with it, which is okay still. I mean, they'll get better mentally. Is that were, kid I was and, talking about that that coach said something yeah. about? Gonna tear people up this year. I don't even coach her anymore. She's yeah. gonna tear people up this well, year. Well, and I and I, you know, I was, I was talking to one, and I, I told her, I said, the biggest problem is is you right now, your mind, you know. Mm-hmm. And we'll get through it, and and stop worrying about it so much. Stop putting yourself on this pedestal that you have to be this score or this top winner or whatever, because you. But all great you've athletes always, have that. You've always you've always been there. They're all type and A. You have to, yeah, and, and They're I'm all like, type but you A. have to understand now. They're the exact opposite of me and you. <laughs> that you hit that wall, and now it's time to struggle. Yeah. Embrace this suck and right. just understand it, and we're going to push through it. And I promise you we're going to be fine, and you'll, and you'll get back to the top. Right. But right now, For sure. accept where you are right. and how hard it's going to be. And she just looked at me. She's like, okay. You, and once they right. accept yeah. that, they get better instantly. Instantly. So that's, that's kind of the – point of today's show we kind of went over you know what it's like to coach your own kid yep. but then we went over ownership as a coach own the kids you coach uh, meaning their successes and their failures and remember that other coaches you look at are going through things you don't understand so you need yep. to give them a chance i think that's the biggest thing yeah. so so thanks for joining today Thank you, Anthony. Yep. You guys will see Anthony a lot. Him and Will actually will be on the show a lot. Uh, they'll co-host whenever they can. So that'll be awesome. All three of us, I think, might be here on the next show. So that'll be even cooler. But thank you so much for joining the Coach's Spot. I hope we brought to light or helped you out a little bit in any way that we could. Hope you guys learned something. And thanks again, Anthony. Yep. Thank you. Oh, like. Comment, subscribe. <laughs> there and you go. Share 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 share, 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 share. Yeah, we don't have sponsors or anything like that. So nope. the only thing we ask in payment is if you learn something or you got something from this, please like and share it. And that's all we ask. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you again on the Coach's Spot. I'm Jason Powell. That's Anthony <laughs> DeBrule. Okay, guys. Thanks a lot. Talk to you later. Bye. That was good. We're still on camera. Don't, don't say anything.